will do. Hello, and welcome to another Beasts Gaming Corner, Beast Dudes Gaming Corner. Today I'm going to show you a game called Mindleaf. I don't know if you made it out, Mindleaf. Right. Um, so, it comes in this bag, get it from the website. Pretty cool game that I got introduced to at uh, the Nine Worlds Geek Fest. Um, I suck at it, so I bought it because A, it's a cool game, and B, I need practice. So you got the, uh, well, let's just empty out the bag. So in the bag, nice hessian type bag, you got these tiles, which is the board, and the initial configuration is a square. Uh, but as you play later on, you can play it uh, in different configurations. I think that might be one. I'll have to look up uh, what type of configurations you can have. I think maybe even that or that. Yeah, just play around to see what you can do. But typically you play as a square first. And now you've got the instructions. So um, that's all there. Take a moment. Blah, 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 blah. And the back. So now you know how to play. Uh, that's it, video over. Ha. No. Uh, so we'll put that aside. So we got the board, we got the play pieces. We got what's called light and dark. No white and black, but I suppose you could call them white and black, or white and brown in this case. Uh, and as you can tell from the uh, instructions, each piece has specific markings on them. Now these markings determine uh, how you play. Well, no, yeah, they do determine how you play. So uh, let's get it all set up here. You don't have to have them exactly the same, uh, but you do have uh, your two players. It's a two-player game. Two, two player game, um, and uh, you have your tiles out up facing up so both players can see your tiles. Um, so you can try and make strategic decisions based on what your opponent has left as well as what you have left. Uh, it is uh, a helpful hint <coughs> that you should try by halfway of the game, <coughs> excuse me, um, through half, by half, halfway of the game, you should only use four of your pieces of the different types. So you have another set here, so you've got more leeway. Um, as I said, I suck at the game, so it hasn't actually helped me much yet, but I intend to get better. So uh, it says white, go uh, white light goes first, but you know, you can flip a coin or say whoever goes first, but in this instance uh, we'll do it by the rules, light goes first. In order to go first, uh, you place it anywhere on the outside. Now let me just double check the rules. Uh, yes, anywhere on the outside. Like I said, I only just got the game, like a few days ago, and uh, you need to re-familiarise myself with it. Um, so the way how you win, essentially, is uh, you're trying to get groups of three in a row, and as many as possible are all over the place, so you can get it uh, vertically, horizontally, um, diagonally, and um, yeah, so that's one point. Uh, if you can get four in a row, that's an extra point, so that's two points. And if you have a different board configuration, if you have five in a row, that's three points. Six in a row, that's four points. Um, but typically you're, you're playing in the square, so the most you can get is two points uh, per line. Um, and you can potentially do something like that, so that's uh, 4 and 4, so that's 4 points, because that's 4 in a row and 4 in a row. Now, um, we'll get on to explaining what these symbols on the pieces mean. So, th this is where the genius of the creator of this game came to play, is that, say for example this one, We'll use the um, this center piece here, so we'll ignore that for now. So we put this in the middle, and that means that the next player can only move, put play a piece in any direction here and here. So if I was to put this one, if I can pick it up, 
they can only move there and there. Now if there are other pieces in the way, for example like that, then the next move can only be here and here. So even though this piece is in the way of the line, you can still play there, and so on and so forth. So uh, that's that piece, and like, it's likewise with all the pieces. So if there's a piece there, then and a piece say here, you can move in these places. So uh, yeah, so that's those two. Explain now. These two are pretty uh, cool. These two utilize the pieces, the play spaces around them. So if I was to place this one here, this one can only go in adjacent squares. It can't go anywhere outside an adjacent square. So even if you play at the side, you can only play it here. And if you put it here, only in those three. Um, that That's pretty good. And the last one is this one, is the opposite of this one. So you can't play here. You can only play outside the adjacent squares. So like there. And um, that's the basics of the game. That's the pieces and uh, essentially how you play. I'll do a quick run through of a game versus myself. Uh, if you want to end the video there, here, uh, you can end the video here, but uh, this is a kind of an example of how a game typically goes. So you choose any piece, uh, light goes first, or dark, doesn't really matter, uh, and then say you place it, oh, no, see, this one here. So this one can now go anywhere here and here. So you want to choose a piece that will restrict movement of your opponent. So let's see not much I can do in terms of restricted so let's put this one here so that means I can't go this way because there's nothing here I can't go here there's nothing here so there's one two three what light can only go in those three places so light is going to let's see put this one here so now Dark can't go here, 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 here. Dark has to go anywhere on the outside. Which is kind of okay. Let's see. Um, hmm. Dark will go here. So that means light can't go here, 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 and here but light can go everywhere else. Now it might have been a dumb move because you've still got like all of this space and these two. So if that's the case, then let's see. I will put this one here. So that means one, two, three are only available for dark. And I've already got a point. Now once a tile's been placed, you can't like overtake a tile or uh, take out a tile, remove a tile, um, so it's kind of like chess uh, in the strategic sense, but you can't um, attack a tile, you can only place tiles. So what should I put next? I'm going to put... I'm going to put this here. So that's one, two, three. Now. Where does white want to go? White light, white light. Light will go here with this. Now you've got four, so that's two points, and you've only got two points there, so you're restricting the opponent's go. So let's see. Yes. Hmm. gonna put this one here all right now obviously uh, this is only just demonstration and I have said already that I'm pretty crappy at the game at the moment uh, so I'm probably making some massive mistakes in terms of strategy but uh, this is just kind of demonstration 
of how to go. So I've placed that so light can only go all around. So where does light want to go? I'm going to try and see if I can get a uh, an example of a move. Let's see. I will put this one here. So that means dark can only go here because it's around here. Dark can only go here. So if dark can only go there, where can light go? Next. So if I put this one here, that restricts light to here. If I put this one here, that also restricts light to here. Just put this one here. So light's now restricted to here. So that means light has uh, a chance now I was hoping I'd get to this uh, if you're still watching the video that's good because now I'm going to explain a uh, a little tactic here um, thing or rule I suppose um, I'm going to play this piece here now what you've noticed is that this can only play here now if there are no legal moves for the next person to go they have to pass uh, because they can't put any places down and if they pass then you have <coughs> free reign of the rest of the board to put a piece wherever you want and if you can chain putting together uh, putting pieces down where you have to force the next person to pass on every go uh, you can end up winning uh, essentially with like five pieces put down and uh, you've won the game I mean like dark hasn't got any points light so far has two points and light is about to get another two points um, Let's see. Yes. Light will go here. So that's three and three. So that's one and two. Plus the four, which is also two. So that's four points already. And dark has none. Dark can only go here. So dark can either restrict the movements uh, by playing this piece to either here or here or by playing this piece and restricting the movement to here which will be better so put that there now dark actually has one piece one point so white light has to go here now once light goes down uh, that's not really a scoring um, line anywhere so you've got the three the three and the four but light now has no more pieces left so dark <coughs> has one more chance to get as many points as possible um, and uh, gets basically a last chance to put down one piece whether to block or um, score <coughs> so uh, once that's happened so let's do that um, it doesn't really matter I suppose so that so now dark has two points because it's got four uh, the game is over because light has no more pieces um, and light has also won because light has more score. Now if it switched over and it was uh, dark who um, played the last piece and then light had one more piece, um, even though dark would have gotten rid of all of its pieces and light would still have say one piece left, light would still be winning in this scenario because of points, because it's two, three, four and only one. So, and, and say for example the last piece was here, I mean like you've only got two there, Ooh, excuse me, and you've got two there for the dark, so put that one there, and you've got two extra. So um, yes, yeah, very strategic, um, I lost all the games I played against the uh, guys at the um, Nine World, <laughs> and uh, I probably made some massive mistakes here on this video. Um, in terms of strategy, but you know, practice and uh, I will get better eventually. And uh, that is Mine Leaf, and yep, that is how you pronounce it Mine Leaf, not like Minecraft, Mine Leaf, and that's how it's spelt. And where to find this game? <coughs> I got this game from the Hopwood Games, that's www.hopwoodgames.co.uk. That's where I got mine from, 
Uh, it cost me £12. That includes post and packaging, paying through PayPal. Um, go check them out on the website. They've got, uh, I think, three or four other games. Um, this one's, to be honest, the only one that actually interests me at the moment. I might check out the others. Uh, yeah, so go to that website, check it out, and uh, get yourself a copy. There you go.